Howdy folks, it's your friend Dominic. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about three of my favorite lures that I use when I'm targeting lake trout. Now, come along with me, let's check it out. I know you're gonna like this. Now, like other salmon and trout, lakers are big time sight feeders. So it's no surprise that spoons are always a great option to carry with you when you're out on the water. Feel free to bring some larger ones that are bright. This is an MK Magnum. Uh, personally, one of my favorite spoons I like to throw are the Moonshine Ultra Glow in the Dark spoons. This is the Nightcrawler color. This is the JJ Mac Muffin. And this is, I'm pretty excited about this one. This is Breadwinner. Uh, the moon shines glow very, very bright, so if you're fishing the low light hours from the nighttime into the early morning, it, it might pay to have a bait that glows in the dark because these fish are going to be using their eyes to get their mouths around any sort of bait fish. Uh, Silver Streaks by Wolverine, they're, they're always a good choice, something flashy. These have a reputation of always being on the boat on the Great Lakes, always have you know some different colors. Uh, always have some different spoons too that weigh a bit more. Uh, if there's some wind, perhaps it would be easier to cast a Meps Cyclops spoon instead of a Wolverine Silver Streak. This gets a lot of flash, it gets the job done, but it just doesn't weigh a lot. On some days, you gotta do yourself a favor, get a heavier spoon. And on days like that, I like the Meps Cyclops. Uh, little Cleos, they work too. Crocodile spoons like this one. The point I'm driving home, spoons, generally speaking, if you have a spoon, it's gonna be a really good lake trout bait. Now, check out my friend Zach right here in this clip. He caught this very nice Laker on a little Cleo, uh, December of 2019 on Saginaw Bay, and it's quite a special trout. It's a very nice one, to say the least. Another cool piece of advice that I want to give with the spoons, uh, but this goes, you know, for all the baits I'm going to share with you today, but especially the spoons. I get a lot of lake trout following up to where I'm fishing or up to the boat. I get a lot of follows with spoons. If I'm seeing some fish trail right up to the surface of the water where my feet are, if I see them coming right up to the boat, I'll take my presentation and slow things down a little bit. And that's gonna open the door into the next category of baits I wanna share with you. Tubes. Uh, you got a tube, you get a big tube. Uh, these are the Berkeley Havoc four and a halfs. This is the Yum Vibra King tube. It is four and a quarter inches long. It's got a nice heavily ribbed body. Kinda of resembles a bait fish, kinda of resembles a real big goby, especially around the Great Lakes these lake trout are going to be trying to eat anything they can get their mouths on. Shiners, small perch, small walleyes, gobies especially, um, and you know, like I said with them being sight feeders, brighter colors, don't be afraid. White is one of my personal favorites. I've caught quite a few with the pink, but you know, the goby colored tones, the darker uh, natural green pumpkin style like these Havocs right here. These work quite, quite well. You know, generally speaking, tubes, great way to cover ground when you're trying to catch lake trout like this. And it's probably the best way to do it when the fish are a little finicky uh, because tubes can be fished, you know, many different ways. They're a very versatile bait. When I want to slow things down a little bit, I'll use a 3 8 or maybe a half ounce jig. Maybe I just want to make a long cast out there and hop the bottom and just kind of scurry around the rocks and, you know, wait for that one fish to see my bait and feel tempted enough to bite it. On the tough days and I'm fishing slow, half ounce, depending on the depth you're casting into and the wind and all the situations you might be facing out there. Uh, on the lighter side, but if the fish are pretty aggressive, I'm not afraid to bump it up to three quarters of an ounce. 
make that cast out there, reel up the slack, and crack it back to me. Sometimes it's those super aggressive spurts when that bait is just darting through the water, over the rocks, just coming along. There's something about the tube that drives them wild. And here's another secret when it comes to fishing lake trout, in my opinion. If you have the ability to put an aftermarket rattle inside your tube or buy a tube jig you like that has a rattle, I recommend doing it because in my experience, if it has a rattle, those fish are going after it. They're gonna see it, they're gonna hear it, and it's gonna be game over and you're gonna have the fish of a lifetime sooner or later on the end of your setup. But these, these jigs I've got going right here, these are just a Bass Pro Shop finesse tube jigs. I'll leave a link below in the description where you can purchase these for yourself or some other tube jigs that are sturdy enough. Make sure you got one with a quality hook that isn't going to bend and one that's going to stay sharp. But other than that, make sure you just get a big fat tube, something at least, you know, four, four and a quarter inches. The bigger the better. The Havocs, the four and a half. Yum, Strike King, Net Bait, Berkeley, whatever you're comfortable fishing with, Lake Trout love tubes. And last of all, thirdly, what I like to share with you as one of my favorite and most successful baits when it comes to casting for lake trout, lipless crankbaits. If you know a thing or two about me, I'm a lipless crankbait junkie, but especially in the colder water seasons when those lake trout are cruising around, actively feeding, looking for something around the Great Lakes, it's hard to beat something that is flashy. It casts very well. Uh, depending on the bait you have, they've got different rattles, but like I said earlier, rattles seem to make the lake trout go nuts. It flips the switch, in my opinion. I do better when I have rattles than when I do without. Uh, my my, my go-to favorite lipless crankbait, because it's flashy, because it nosedives really hard, it's, it's very visible. These hooks are very, very tacky. If a fish swipes at it, you know, they're going for it. And this is the Rapala rip and wrap one of my all-time favorite lipless cranks this is the half ounce size this is the much larger 7 8 size i don't fish with this one that often unless i'm fishing kind of deeper but if i'm under 16 feet of water so i'm kind of casting this half ounce around and yo-yoing it because oftentimes when i'm fishing for lake trout i'm on a pier or a boardwalk if you will and I'm off of the water a little bit sometimes so it's very easy for me to take that rod let that bait sink and pull it back up to me so that bait is nose diving down and fluttering and flashing and then I give it a nice hard rip and it goes back down and flutters and flashes and I give it a nice big rip I've cast it on top of lake trout before hooked up to them lost them and then cast it right back where I lost them and just fished it slowly and rocked it a little bit and I've had them come back for it. I, 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 I don't blame you if you don't trust me about that. It happened to me a few weeks ago when I caught my personal best lake trout with this bad lad right here. Well, this model wasn't this exact one I have in my hand, but this color, this size does a very good job for me. And also, late fall, you're throwing around lipless crankbaits. It's got a good chance of catching a really nice walleye. Uh, as far as other lipless cranks, go that I really enjoy. We have the Berkeley Warpig, great all species lipless crankbait. It'd do the job very well for lake trout along with the Booyah Hard Knockers. You know, these got a very deep rattle. They're very shiny. These just look like they would love to get walloped. And then I've got an old reliable Rapala Rattlin Rap. You know, just your basic go-to lipless crank. Hey, it'll work. And then if you want something that darts and swims in an erratic action, it's got a nice rattling cadence and flash to it. This is the new Rapala V-Blade. I've been playing with this bait frequently, and I tell you what, the fish do seem to like this sort of bait, especially in the colder water. Something that's got a nice tight vibration, something that's gonna drop and give it a flash, the rattle, the combination of a lot of things with the lipless cranks. They're just hard to beat, I'm not gonna lie. They're just hard to beat. And if you're wondering what I use when it comes to 
the rod when casting for lake trout. This is my walleye jigging rod actually that I use oftentimes on the St. Clair and the Detroit River. It is a six foot six medium heavy Abu Garcia Vendetta. I call this the fish elevator. You know, it's the crowbar for when I'm trying to get them off of the ground. I'm running a 15 pound Berkeley X9 Jordan Lee braid. They say it breaks at 31 pounds or so. I've caught several fish with it and I've put it to the test up against the rocks. It holds up very, very well. And I've got a fluorocarbon leader. This is 17 pound Berkeley Trilene fluorocarbon. I like having an invisible leader. You know, one less thing for the fish to get uh, spooked about. I, generally speaking, a lot of folks don't think they are that line shy at all. It's just a personal preference. And when you're lake trout fishing, for the most part, you know, if, if they're there biting, you're going to know it. That's just me in my experience. Some people don't even cast for them where I fish. They just put out minnows and perch rigs because those fish are just trying to come through and eat. This is my rod and reel. I'll, I'll be doing a video in depth more about it in the future but medium heavy i swing it like a baseball bat to drive those hooks home braid very important and you know i like the fluorocarbon leader because you know i'm fishing around a lot of rocks fishing around a lot of cover my leader is going to get beat up and it, I, i'm going to need to have a line that can take that abuse so with that being said we looked over spoons tubes and lipless crankbaits these are the three baits I always have with me when I'm going lake trout fishing. And, you know, if you're hitting the piers around the Great Lakes when the water's cold and you have something like this with you, I bet you chances are you got a good shot at catching a fish. But you can't catch a fish sitting on the couch, sitting at home. You got to get in the car and get to the water. I'll be sure to leave a link for everything that I mentioned below in the description. And if you have any experience with these baits, if you have any experiences with lake trout fishing, please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say. But until next time, folks, please be sure to like the video and subscribe and have a great day.